Kaz from Radio, your dependable neighbor. Today, February the 5th, 2020, Answers Party Line, brought to you by Wimmer Opticians of St. Cloud Atlas Family Chiropractic of Waite Park. We have sunshine, and according to the Community Technology Center Weather Station, our temp is at 14. Forecast says 25 with lots of sun today. Tonight down to 10, partly cloudy. 24, maybe some snow later in the day, probably in the evening tomorrow night for uh, for tomorrow's high, 24. Tomorrow night down to 15, and again, snowfall possibility. Friday, some snow and 22, but right now sunshine, 14. My name is Brad Melke. Good morning. In studio with us from the Soil and Water Conservation District and NRCS, we have our group, including Dennis Fuchs, administrator with the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District, Nate Brandt, soil conservationist, NRCS, and Brittany Lensmeyer, outreach and program coordinator, SWCD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brad. Uh, meow. How are you doing? Meow. Back to you, sir. How are things in February? Very good. We've been extremely busy doing a lot of stuff in our office. Uh, uh, staff have been busy uh, uh, accomplishing uh, all the year-end reporting and getting ready for this next year. We got uh, some grants coming in our office and. The partners at NRCS has been busy with EQIP and CSP, and we've got outreach efforts coming in. Speaking of outreach, yes, we have Mr. Segway. Yeah, <laughs> we have a new outreach and pro- program coordinator at the Stearns County SWCD, and uh, Brittany Lensmeyer, and we're very happy to have her on our team. We uh, in the past, uh, Katie Breath. Uh, did a lot of this work, and uh, she also did source water protection work with our communities. We have now transferred the source water protection work over to Wayne Simbaluk in our office and uh, uh, brought on Brittany on our team to help with all of the outreach efforts uh, in our, our office from field days to special activities, uh, farm shows, uh, and then also help with all our social media, our annual reports, our quarterly newsletter, and then even you getting pile a, some more work on her. Well, My that's, goodness, <laughs> she's a she's a work uh, a okay. workhorse. So we really uh, uh, like that about Brittany. And uh, Brittany, maybe you just want to let the listeners know uh, where you're from and how you got to the Stearns SWCD. Yeah, good morning. So I actually grew up on a farm um, northeast of Lake Henry. Um, I, we dairied until I was a young teen, and my parents still are out on the farm doing crop and um, raising beef steer. Um, so growing up in the egg industry has always been, it's been my, in my blood. And so in high school, I joined FFA and that's where I really got to understand more of the egg industry, what kind of opportunities there were. Um, and I, and I enjoyed, um, different public speaking events, floriculture, small animal, a variety of things served as an officer. So from there, um, I knew I wanted to do a career in agriculture, so I um, went to University of Wisconsin, River Falls, and I majored in agricultural marketing communications with a minor in crop science, and I graduated from there in 2016. Um, So when this opportunity presented itself, it was essentially a dream job come true where I can combine my marketing experience and my agricultural experience into one job. So how many days have you been on the job now so far? Um, I joined SWCD on December 9th. December 9th. So, so you went, this was your first major career job. Yes. And how, how, what is it as far as you going into it? Is it what you had expected? Yes, absolutely. I, everyone's been so welcoming, so great. Um, everyone works as a team and I enjoy the designing aspect, um, getting to talk to people and just overall it's awesome. But when you're coming in, in into a position that, that has been filled previously, and, and I'm sure there's been a, you know, you kind of evolved, but how did you kind of bring what you know into this position, I guess, and kind of make it your own? Yeah, um, just kind of, I think I have an advantage of knowing the agriculture industry and the lingo and understanding that. And so being able to, whether it's talking to producers or um, even the coworkers and having that base understanding, um, I was able to bring that in and then just the different um, things I learned through college, kind of incorporate that in. So then how, what, what kind of, are you hoping this year, what kind of programs and things do you want to kind of bring to the table to kind of, you know, get the word out there, I guess? Yeah, so I think everybody has a story to tell in agriculture and everybody's story is different. And so I hope I can somehow incorporate a variety of farmer stories into whether it's a quarterly newsletter, um, 
um, social media, mm -hmm. um, public events, things like that, um, because farmers are the ones that take care of the land, do everything, and we're the ones that need to tell our story sure. before they hear it from someone else. So if there are any uh, listeners out there, this is Dennis uh, uh, with the SVCD, uh, you know, let Brittany know. And uh, this would be a great opportunity to highlight uh, maybe a project you you did with us, maybe uh, uh, install the grass waterway or water and sediment basin, or just worked with our office to do some CSP work, uh, the Conservation Stewardship Program, or in the, and participated in the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. It's just a great opportunity to talk about how uh, you receive service from our office and uh, how we deliver customer service to our clients and uh Hopefully you had a very good experience. Uh, if you didn't, we don't want to even talk to you. No. <laughs> no, if you, if you had bad experience, then I want to hear about it. You talk to me, and then uh, we'll make some improvements. So we'll make that adjustment. But I, I think it's just a, a great opportunity uh, with Brittany on her team, you know, to highlight uh, the work uh, that our office does hand-in-hand uh, -hand with our farmers and landowners in Stearns County. So we're always looking for stories and a way to, to share that. And like Brittany said, every every story is different. Every landowner uh, has different uh, resource goals as far as what they want to protect on their property and the programs available to assist them. That's why we partner with NRCS. And uh, I should have Nate give a little bit. He was in here in November, but I was thinking mm -hmm. it would be nice just to have him uh, uh, introduce himself again to our listeners because he's new. You know, he's sure. only been here for a half a year or so. And, and uh, Nate, you just want to give us a little background on where you're from, too? Sure, yeah. Nate Brandt. Um, I started in White Park, NRCS, October 13th, so middle of October. Before that, I was in the Bemidji NRCS office as a technician um, for six years. Um, so I went to school at BSU um, up there in Bemidji, got my degree in environmental studies, and so far, I've been working for NRCS, and it's been great. Um, love working with the private landowners and doing our best to improve the natural resources out there. Um, I've had a chance to meet a handful of folks in the area. Mostly been working on the conservation stewardship program. We've been finishing up payments for everybody that's in there. And I encourage you, if you've heard about the program, you know, you've probably got neighbors, heard about it at the coffee shop, whatnot. Give us a call, ask some questions, put in an application. Let's see if it works out for you. Um, we pay, you know, money for you to kind of maintain the environmental stewardship that you're doing out there and then implement some more practices. So the, the, your previous NRZ, NRCS position compared to now, how are things, were, were things more the same or, or were there some, you know, differential kind of things between what you did there and what you do now here? There's a difference. The farming practices are different. Um, <clears throat> once you get a few hours north, some more <laughs> grazing operations, a little shorter growing season. Um, and a lot of folks up there, farming was not their primary profession. It was try to do a little farming during the summer and then drive bus or do some logging during the winter. Where down here, it's um, more precision nutrient application. It's more pre more uh, more precise farming. Um a little more intense, and it's a lot of fun working with these folks. You mentioned logging as part of the industry up there. How did that affect what you did? Anything did you have to do with that? Oh, yeah, we would it? do some, we'd work with private landowners on um, um, private forest land practices, so we'd help them take care of exotic invasive species out there, um, encourage them to do some food plots or clearing openings, you know, just general um, hardwood or softwood forest and improvement activities. Okay. So. All right. Very good. Nate Brand joining us, Brittany Lensmeyer, Dennis, you've got all of these uh, kind of activities coming up. Why don't we take a break for some news? We'll take some news information here in about uh, 40 seconds. We'll get to Minnesota news. We'll talk some weather and markets. And then when we get back, we'll talk about some like Pheasants Forever. Banquet. Yeah, we got all kinds of activities coming up. We've got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned, listeners. <laughs> that was, I like that. I was very hypeful, you know, just <laughs> put that hype in there. Get everybody, oh, we're going to come back. We're going to talk more with our guests this morning, Dennis Fuchs and Brant, Brittany Lensmeyer here on Chasm Radio. We have a temp of 15 degrees. Again, according to the forecast, we're going to see high today of about uh, they are saying about 25 with lots of sun, but snowfall in the forecast for tomorrow night in 
to Friday and then cloudy on Saturday once again. But for right now, your look at news information, Chasm Radio. More answers. Party line this morning with our representatives from the SWCD and RCS. We have Dennis Fuchs, Nate Brandt, Brittany Lensmeyer, and we are going to talk about some stuff now, including the banquet coming up, which is what, Dennis? That is going to be coming up here Saturday, March 7th. This is the Stearns County Pheasants Forever Banquet. And we've got a great partnership with our local Pheasants Forever chapter. And uh, this is actually the 37th uh, annual banquet. And it's going to be at the Holiday Inn in St. Cloud like uh, last year. Uh, we had a great turnout last year. The doors open at uh, 5 p.m. and the banquet starts at 7 p.m. And I'm not going to get into all the details about registration and stuff, but uh, that information is available online. Or if you'd like to call uh, our office, uh, we can get you additional information. But there is a lot of stuff going on at that uh, banquet, a lot of uh, uh, opportunity to win prizes. It's a, also a way that the chapter uh, uh, generates funds to do all kinds of projects in the county. And uh, they've, they've accomplished a lot. Uh, they're actually a $7 million chapter. And uh, they support local high school trap teams. We're trying to get more uh, folks involved with our outdoors. And uh, that's great for conservation, too, because you start recognizing uh, the value of our resources and uh, they also uh, do volunteer coaching for high school trap teams. Uh, they uh, help with youth day and organized archery and sporting clays trap and shooting lessons for area youth. Uh, they also support our Stearns SVCD Farm Bill Biologist uh, position. And they also have uh, provided uh, $5,000 to create a pollinator program, which uh, we're going to be kicking off this year, thanks to the uh, Pheasants Forever Stearns County chapter support. They also uh, provide uh, funds to the Legislative Action Fund. This helps to make sure that uh, CRP payments to landowners are at a place where uh, it uh, provides value to the farmer and also to the hunter. They also participate in the Outdoor Heritage Fund uh, for land purchase for uh, public use. And they don't just purchase uh, uh, any type of land. They look for areas that are adjacent to existing uh, waterfall production areas, uh, areas that don't uh, have high uh, yield potential, uh, hydric soils, very wet soils. And uh, we like to uh, farm the best and buffer the rest is uh, one of the mottos. And then they also been involved with the uh, Farm Friends Barn. It's an uh, activity over in Sherburne County where they're trying to get a more ag-related uh, barn built to teach uh, youth uh, more about agriculture. And the Pheasants Forever chapter has been very active with that. They understand uh, agriculture in Stearns County is critical uh, uh, to the economy. And also there's an opportunity for pheasant hunters and other hunters to enjoy uh, these areas that are less productive and an opportunity to to uh, harvest some birds. Uh, unless you're Dennis Fuchs, well, then you have, you're a member of Pheasants Forever because you miss a lot and they last forever. They should change their name to Wildlife and Agriculture Forever rather <laughs> well, than just pheasants. Yeah. Because it's really how they kind of broaden things out and what they do. Yeah, and the, the tagline uh, for Pheasants Forever is the Habitat Organization. Sure. So uh, what's good for the pheasant is good for all kinds of things, uh, including uh, sequestering carbon and uh, improving our, our drinking water supplies in these native areas. Uh, the water is very clean that comes through native prairie. Uh, so it, it's just there's a lot of value in having an organization like this, and that's why uh, the Stearns County Soil Water Conservation District and the Pheasants Forever Chapter have a great, great partnership. And one of the things that they do at the banquet, which is, again, Saturday, March 7th, it's coming up quick, but you got time. The uh, You get your registration information in before February 28th. You get in on the early bird drawing. <laughs> <laughs> the early bird. <laughs> yeah. Early pheasant. Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the things that they uh, also do at the uh, uh, banquet is recognize their outstanding conservationists. And uh, that is just super cool. Uh, they recognize our, our outstanding conservationists. They put it in the, the packet. And in the uh, the, the board uh, or the uh, banquet uh, booklet, uh, they're going to have a little write-up uh, on our outstanding conservationists. And let me just uh, – our outstanding conservationist last year was Galen uh, Wilczek of Bolas. He's got a 370-acre farm. He grows corn, soybean, alfalfa, and raises poultry. Galen has been farming the land since 1992. In the last four years, he's installed a grass waterway, a terrace, several water and sediment control basins, a concrete 
stacking slab. Galen has also worked with a crop consultant to better utilize his nutrients. Galen is also certified with the Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification Program. Galen enjoys wildlife and made a decision to enroll some of his critical resource areas into CRP. Yeah, he also loves to take the opportunity to hunt with his daughter and observe wildlife. Galen always says, if you take care of the land, it'll take care of the rest. That's Galen. So it is just a great opportunity uh, uh, for folks to come out there, shake his hand, and and mingle with uh, uh, other folks that appreciate our resources here in, in the county. So hopefully uh, 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 I'll see a bunch of our listeners there. And uh, it'll be a, an opportunity to have a little fun, too. I'm, I'm planning on having at least one beer there. Is that allowed? Yes. Really? Yes, they do serve beer there. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Holiday Inn provides okay. that and uh, includes a meal and then all kinds of raffles and uh, live auction. And, and it's just a very festive evening. But before that, the farm show. Yes. Let's talk about the farm show. I'll have Brittany cover that. Yeah, so we will be at the farm show along with Benton County and Sherburne County Soil and Water. The farm show is happening February 25th and February 26th. Um, this year it's only two days. Um, it's um, Tuesday is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Wednesday is from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you can find us at booth A108. Um, it's free admission. There will be over 200 vendors in over 300 booths. There's daily seminars and topics on the hour, daily prize drawings, um, free coffee and donuts, and scholarships awarded. So come on out and see us at booth A108 on February 25th and February 26th. At your booth A108, what will be represented there? What do you bring to the farm show? We will be talking all about conservation. Uh So if you have any questions or want to learn more about um, different practices, um, programs we offer, come over and visit, and we can answer your questions and chat about conservation. Very good. Speaking of conservation, I was going to have uh, Nate talk a little bit about some of the work that he's working on in, in his office. He's got, he's, we're just so happy to have Nate in our office. This guy is uh, very uh, calm, uh, knowledgeable, and loves working with our, our farmers here in central Minnesota. So uh, it's a real treat uh, if you're a listener to come in and uh, uh, make your acquaintance with Nate. And uh, he's going to talk about some of the programs that uh, he's working on. And I think it's just a great opportunity to work with somebody that uh, you're really going to enjoy working with. Thanks, Dennis. Um, yeah, so we just found out yesterday we have an upcoming deadline for the Environmental Qualities Incentive Program. Um, that's a good program if you have any um, like structural practices or erosion practices you want to try to implement out there. We can provide some potential cost share to get that done for you, whether it be grass waterways, um, if you want to give cover crops a shot, high tunnels. So like, a, you know, on some of your smaller operations, if you happen to be listening, you know, you got a vegetable garden, you want to try putting someone like a structure over that to extend the growing season. Hey, we can cost share on that. Pollinator habitat, which is also a wonderful pheasant and deer habitat. Um, there's all this money out there to help you implement these practices. And the deadline to get an application in is March 13th. Uh, we encourage you to come in before that. Um, hopefully by the end of the month here even, and then that way we can take care of eligibility stuff and get you ready to roll, get a solid plan in place. And, you know, it's competitive money, but uh, we'll do our best to get you funded, and hopefully we can see some conservation on the ground. Also, we have the Conservation Stewardship Program. No deadlines or not much more information on that, but if it's something you hear about from the neighbors or in the coffee shop, um, there's been some challenges in the past with the program, but... You know, we got some new staff in the office, and we're um, bringing in as much information as we can, and hopefully we can get some more folks interested and signed up for that program, too. That's a five-year deal where we give you an annual payment to kind of maintain the conservation you're doing out there and then take on a few extra practices, whether it be plant a few trees, do some pollinator habitat, cover crops. Um, there's a list of a couple hundred we can take a look at doing. So, well, What were the issues that were kind of you know, sticklers before that you're trying to improve? I think it all kind of came down to poor communication. Maybe in the past we signed folks up with too much um, too much for them to do, and we didn't realize it till we had a contract. So I like to always 
it's always fun working with folks that are ambitious and want to get all this done, but it's good to take a step back and let's take a look at what's doable and we don't want to get anybody in over their head. So, mm. All right. And, and the cost share funding that you, you guys provide, you said it's competitive. Does that mean it, it always gets utilized? It's not something that just sits there and nobody takes advantage of? Correct. Yeah. We run through a ranking process. Um, more or less, it's due kind of where your land ca- your location is in the landscape. You know, if, are we going to see water quality benefits? Are we going to see soil um, um, soil health improvement benefits? And uh, how much you're willing to take on to improve those resources out there? And we run through, you know, there's a ranking process based on kind of the area and then across the state in general, too. So... So, uh, Nate, I, I think I saw something that uh, as far as uh, being ranked as a high priority, one was uh, source water protection uh, areas in Stearns County since it, all of our water flows into the Mississippi before uh, uh, the city of uh, or the Twin Cities uh, uptake uh, the drinking water out of the Mississippi. We were in a high priority area uh, for CSP. Yeah, preliminary, it's kind of looking like um, if you're in a I think it's a source water protection area, and there's a scattering of those across the state. Um, there's one great big one, though, that covers all of Stearns, or pretty much all of Stearns County and a few of the neighboring counties, too. So um, if anything, that could, you know, give folks in the area kind of an advantage and hopefully a better chance of getting you funded for at least the conservation stewardship program. So, so I... I think uh, uh, I've heard a, several people say that the CSP program was a lot of uh, uh, paperwork and, uh, you know, it's just a little confusion out there. And I, I want our listeners to know that uh, we want to reach out and we want to we want you to come in our office and check this program out. It would be a great opportunity to enhance some of your farming practices and get paid to do that. And uh, since we're in the priority area uh, Nate is uh, ready to, to help you and, and other staff in the office. Uh, just come in the office and at least take a look at the program. This is an opportunity uh, to help our farmers uh, do a little bit better job than you already are and get paid for the extra effort. And uh, this is uh, an opportunity to bring these federal dollars uh, uh, from D.C. into Stearns County and central Minnesota to help our, our producers. So take a look at it. Uh, Nate's a, a wonderful guy to be working with. we got other staff in the office that are uh, uh, learning the ropes from, from Nate on CSP, and uh, we're just rolling out the red carpet. Let's uh, let's get CSP uh, up and running here in Stearns County. We've been a little bit uh, slow in the past, and uh, I think uh, there's an opportunity here to do a much better job with CSP and, and have our farmers uh, participate in a great program. Nate, how, how much of, a, a, of an effort has to be done with, you know, on your part to kind of determine what is best for that, that farmer or landowner to, uh, to implement? As far as CSP, um, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of work coming up to it. There's a lot of paperwork. Um, you know, we'll sit down with the farmer or the landowner and kind of evaluate their operation. Everybody's unique, and from there, um, take a look at the landscape, take a look at what that landowner's goals are, and we got a whole list of practices or enhancements that we can kind of cherry pick what's going to work best for them. And working through that application process, they're going to know exactly how much, you know, this cost share financial assistance they're going to get each year to take on this stuff before they sign any contracts or anything. So um, there's no heartburn if you decide, you know, we present you with, hey, you're going to get so much per acre per year or so much um, payment by December to get this done. If it isn't enough, it isn't enough. Let's, uh, you know, we'll try again next year or we'll take another view at it. So. Okay. All right. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, nitrogen uh, conferences uh, coming up. As uh, a lot of our listener uh, farmers have probably already heard, the Minnesota Groundwater Protection Rule has now uh, been passed and it's uh, moving forward. And uh, that's based off of the nitrogen fertilizer uh, management plan. And that the, the groundwater protection rule is based on that. So uh, the Nitrogen Fertilizer Management Plan is the state's uh, blueprint for preventing and minimizing the impacts of nitrogen fertilizer on groundwater. Also, uh, uh, the hypoxia down in the Gulf of Mexico, the dead zone, is also influenced by the amount of nitrates moving through our surface waters. And uh, 
Uh, the plan uh, emphasizes involving local farmers and agronomists and minimizing nitrate losses in areas where we have uh, sensitive uh, groundwater contamination. And uh, uh, we're really uh, hoping that some, some farmers participate in uh, these uh, upcoming uh, nitrogen management meetings. One of those uh, uh, meetings is called Nitrogen Smart. And uh, we don't have any uh, uh, right here in uh, Stearns County, but they're in Wilmer, Annandale, and Little Falls. And I'll get you the dates on, on those uh, after I talk a little bit about what you're going to learn. So uh, Nitrogen Smart is an educational program for producers that presents fundamentals for maximizing economic return on nitrogen investments while minimizing nitrogen losses. And uh, the morning session on Nitrogen Smart Fundamental uh, delivers uh, high-quality research-based education so producers can learn about sources of nitrogen for crops, how nitrogen is lost from the soil, and how you can reduce losses, how to manage nitrogen in a drainage with drainage systems, what the nutrient reduction strategy, strategy and nitrogen fertilizer management plan mean for Minnesota producers and practices to refine nitrogen management including split application and soil and tissue testing and other uh, uh, precision application methods. Nitrogen Smart is a certification uh, uh, you can get certified through Nitrogen Smart and that would be valid for three years after participating. Uh, the fundamentals course is part of that. And then there's the advanced nitrogen smart session, which is usually in the afternoon. And uh, those participants that uh, participate in that uh, uh, can learn some additional information. Uh, the course is also available online. And if you want to attend in person, I'm going to give you some dates. Uh, and it's free to attend. You just have to register uh, for these. Uh, one, uh, one event is at Little Falls. That will be Tuesday, February 11th. And that's uh, next week, 9 to noon, at the Little Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. And then they have the Advanced Nitrogen uh, Smart at Little Falls that afternoon from 1 to 4. And then uh, they also have one at Annandale. This is a little bit later this month. It'll be Friday, uh, February 28th, 9 to noon, at St. John's Lutheran Church in Annandale. And then the afternoon is at the same place, uh, 1 to 4, and that's the Advanced Nitrogen Smart. They also have it at Wilmer on Monday, March 2nd, 9 to noon, and uh, uh, 1 to 4 at the Wilmer Conference uh, Center. So what, those are uh, uh, really specialized training on how to manage nitrogen. Uh, I don't know if uh, all our listeners have heard, but we do have a couple communities in Stearns County that are at a mitigation level 2. That means some uh, additional work is going to need to be done in Melrose and Cold Spring. Uh, they have experienced uh, elevated nitrate, uh, nitrates in their drinking water supply, and uh, as part of the groundwater protection rule, uh, they're going to be a, there's going to be a local farmer advisory committee uh, developed. There's going to be a lot of uh, activity to, to figure out how we can reduce nitrates in the Melrose and Cold Spring. And we've done a lot of work in the past in these areas, but we're going to have to kip, kick it up a notch here to uh, see if we can get these nitrates trending in the downward trend instead of uh, uh, moving in the upward trend. There's also another conference coming up uh, on nitrates. This is going to be at Alexandria. As you can see, nitrates are a big deal. Uh, and I just saw something, uh, the people down in the Gulf that fish, are because of the dead zone, are, are struggling to survive as fisher people because of the, the contaminants coming through the Mississippi. And uh, we, we're really uh, uh, trying to educate our farmers on the best management practices associated with nitrogen management, and we really need to do the best job we possibly can uh, in order to solve this problem. And another uh, great conference coming up is the Nitrogen uh, Minnesota's Grand Challenge and Compelling Opportunity Conference. This is going to be Tuesday, February 18th. And this is going to be at the Arrowwood in Alexandria from 8.30 in the morning until 3.25. And this one will cost uh, $20 to attend. And there's a ton of information online or give our office a call and we can uh, help get you uh, additional information on that. But that's coming up here fairly quick, uh, Tuesday, February 18th. And uh, it's $20 to register. And they've got a variety of topics uh, that uh, they're going to be sharing uh, uh, at that meeting. Uh, lessons learned from 2019, 
the importance of urban and non-urban nutrient reductions. They're actually going to have somebody from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency talk about that because urban folks have to do their part too. It's not just farmers. So we're going to be uh, uh, talking about that. And then we're going to uh, have uh, uh, economist Bill Lazarus from the University of Minnesota talk about modeling the cost-effectiveness of practices to reduce watershed nutrient loads. And then uh, there's breakout sessions in the afternoon. There's a variety of things. Uh, to, you don't have to go to a, a, a talk that you're not interested in. You can choose the one that you prefer to listen to. And they've got uh, eight different breakout sessions in the afternoon. Uh, everything from where do the University of Minnesota nitrogen recommendations come from, recent findings in nitrogen management research, evaluating end stabilizers, uh, the Minnesota Groundwater Protection Rule. We're going to have uh, Larry Gunderson from the Minnesota Department of Ag talking. So there's a ton of stuff going on with nitrogen. And uh, we hope to see our farmers at these meetings. And see you at the farm show, too. Yes, we got the farm show coming up. And do we have a minute or two to talk about the irrigation? Yeah, go ahead, quick. I'll have Brittany uh, talk about that because I'm running out of spit. <laughs> All right, on March 10th, there will be an irrigator's clinic um, at the Minnewaska House in Glenwood. Um, some topics that will be covered will be cover crops on irrigated acres, soil health, irrigation research, irrigation variable rate technology, which includes water usage and power saving methods. Um, there is a pre-registration um, is required and a $10 registration fee, which includes a meal. Registration deadline is Friday, February 28th, 2020. Um, you can make the checks payable to Pope SWCD um, and to Attention Holly. Um, the address for that is 1680 Franklin Street North, Glenwood, Minnesota, 56334. Um, if you do not pre-register, the registration at the door is $20 and a meal cannot be guaranteed. Um, registration starts at 9 a.m. and the uh, clinic goes until 2.30 p.m. Again, that's Tuesday, March 10th. All right. All right. Just uh, uh, irrigation water, if it's over-applied, nitrates uh, uh, will move with your water. So irrigation water management is critical to doing a good job with uh, utilizing your nitrogen fertilizer. So just everything ties together. And uh, we've got a lot of great great stuff happening uh, out of our office and with our partners. And thank you, Chasm, for letting us uh, share this information with your listeners. Thank you much. Dennis Books, Administrator with the SWCD, Nate Brandt, Soil Conservationist, NRCS, Brittany Lensmeyer, Outreach Program Coordinator at SWCD. Thanks for joining us for uh, lightning again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Red. Right. We're going to have some news coming up next. It's Chasm Radio.